Hey everybody, George from Redox here, and I'm here with some rapid fire questions and answers so you can know more about fire. This isn't for developers, it's for the rest of us normal folks who hear it all the time in healthcare and need to be able to know what the heck people are talking about. I thought you'd never ask. FHIRE is basically a new standard for healthcare data exchange. It stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resource and is being developed by the standards body, Health Level 7. The goal of FHIRE is basically to improve the way healthcare data is exchanged so that it can be used to accelerate research and be incorporated in new technologies designed to make healthcare better for patients and providers. That's FHIRE. Basically because the current standards in use for healthcare data exchange are a major pain in the ass. They make it really difficult to exchange data and are inconsistent across sites. They were developed way before the internet was ubiquitous and lack a lot of the efficiencies gained over the last decade that basically every other industry uses. So FHIRE aims to get healthcare caught up. Who cares about FHIRE? Um, Primarily developers. So developers and then health system IT staff. They're the ones who are gonna be working with it the most and they're the ones who really can understand how it improves on what they've been using to this point. In general though, everybody in healthcare is excited about it. You'll always hear about the difficulty of interoperability or to share data and Fire has been presented as the solution to a lot of those problems. So in general, the developers are gonna be the most excited but the industry as a whole is excited to catch up with, you know, the rest of the world. When it comes to fire, you're gonna hear the term resource a lot. Um, the best way to think about it is it's a defined packet of information. So everyone who requests a certain resource, they know what they're gonna find in that resource. An example is a patient. Um, a patient resource is gonna include consistent information about their demographics, their name, their birthday, things like that. Um, another one is called coverage. Coverage resource includes information on the patient's insurance information, how they'll pay for coverage. It's basically, FHIRE set out to define what's the type of healthcare information that needs to be exchanged, that's used all, all the time. Let's define those in certain packets that are very clear that people know what they're grabbing, those are called resources, and those will be the building blocks that people use to exchange data. You can either grab one resource or you can package it together for a lot of useful information about a patient, something called a collection. Really, just think about it as a defined set of information that covers a certain area of healthcare. Kind of. So fire, like most things in life, is older, more mature than it's ever been at this exact moment. Well, maybe not this moment because you'll watch it later, but bear with me. Basically, they've been working on fire for a long time, and now they finally have released what has been determined a standard for trial use, which is actually a really good sign. It doesn't sound like it's ready to go because it says trial use, but in reality, a lot of standards that are used a lot, things like CDA, are still defined as standard for trial use and they're literally used every day. So the thing of why it's kind of a sort of it's being used today is because it's still being made available by the EHR vendors, which then needs to be adopted by the health system which uses that EHR. And it's really the big dogs who are leading the charge. So the Epics, the Cerners, the Athena Health, the Allscripts, um, and there's a lot of other AHRs which haven't released FHIRE updates yet, but will follow in suit eventually. Um, the other reason why it's only kind of sort of usable today is those resources that I talked about earlier. So the resources, you need a lot of them to, ex to facilitate the type of exchange that people want in healthcare. And right now, only a handful of resources are actually mature enough to really be used effectively. Things like patient, for instance. So it's gonna be a while until all of the resources get to that level of maturity where it's really effective and in use and ubiquitous. Um, so the answer is kind of. The one thing to keep in mind though is that it is further along than it's ever been and it shows a lot of promise. You should care about FHIRE because it promises to accelerate innovation in healthcare. And at the end of the day, we're all patients. Electronic health records, the primary software that providers use today is basically like a smartphone without an app store. You get it, it has some stuff, that's pretty cool, but it's nowhere near as effective and useful as smartphones are today where you download all these customizable apps specific to your unique needs. The goal of Fire, by improving the way healthcare data is exchanged, 
is also to allow all of these new technologies to come in and to be used by providers that are very specific to their workflows and needs, basically allowing them to be better at their jobs, which allows them to provide better healthcare, which helps you, us, as patients. So you don't need to know about all the development stuff and the nitty gritty details, but Fire is cool, it's good to know about, you should be excited. For more information on Fire and healthcare in general, make sure to check us out at RedoxEngine.com. We have a lot of good stuff there. Uh, we are the leading healthcare integration platform for modern technologies, helping health systems get new tools in the hands of patients and providers. Uh, we will be back with more information. We're gonna have fun with these videos, so if you have feedback, make sure to let us know. Until then, Take care.